that customer is absolutely king and it has to be the focal point of all of our thinking, all of our thoughts, all of our business activities. You know, customers used to want quality. Today they demand it and they'll settle for nothing less. And I'm concerned because I see a creeping paralysis that's, that's growing throughout the nation. It's what I call don't give a damn complex or that's good enough for government work. Mm -hmm. You know, people that say that I'm not going to stress to be my very best, that I'm going to stop short of where I know I can actually be. And that really is a cancerous condition that we've got to cut out of our thinking. Because quality has to start from the top and come down through the organization. And the problem that we have is we really haven't presented a good picture to the CEO to make him believe that there really is a need for him to do something. And how do you do that? Well, you do that first by preparing a really good need analysis. By that, I mean you go out and benchmark your competition. Understand not only where they are, but where are they going over the next 10 years, and how are you going to stack up against them? What we've got to do is we've got to concentrate on preventing errors from occurring rather than reacting to them. We've got to focus on continuously improving rather than setting a target and feeling that we've made that target and everything is good from that point. We can relax and walk away from it. We've got to understand what the root cause of the problems are so we can prevent them from ever reoccurring rather than reacting to symptoms. We've got to go to a participative environment where our managers are actively participating and working closely with our employees rather than giving orders. We have to really start thinking more statistically. We've got to have numbers. We've got to have facts. When we make decisions, there's got to be decisions that's based upon real data instead of flying by the seat of the pants as we have in the past. The thing that really works, the thing that we find consistently works, is when you get into a participative environment where you actually involve the employee in the decisions that are related to them. You know, studies have proven that when you're using a participative system, you will have better performance in your company. 14 out of the 15 key measurements as far as performance are better if you have a participative system. And we've proven that in a number of studies that we've done. My good friend Dr. Ishikawa states that a people building philosophy will cause the program to succeed. A people using philosophy will cause the program to fail. Think about that a little bit and what he really means. When he says you're using people, he means that you're using them for problem solving. And we think of teams primarily in the United States as problem solving. Mm -hmm. A people building philosophy is when you empower the employees to implement and solve their own problems, not just solve problems. So there's a very, very important difference. And what we need to do as we're developing our teams is empower people not only to solve the problems, but to implement their solutions. And that's a very important step forward. When you start to think about it, you can put a person in a team, but you cannot make them participate. The team environment stimulates that, but you really need to get down to the individual. You have to get the message to the individual. Really, when you start to think about it, we may function in a team environment for one hour out of the 40 hours we work. We got another 39 hours we focus as individuals. And why do you go to work? You go to work because you want to make a living for your family. You want to come home to your family with a paycheck. You want to be proud of the job. You want to be proud of what you accomplished. And your family wants to know what did you do, not what did the team do. So individual involvement is very, very important. And particularly in the United States, with our strong desire to compete, the individual is very important. And we consistently overlook that. We think we can do everything with teams. If you think about quality, quality is doing things right every time. But we really want to go beyond quality. We want to go to perfection. And perfection is doing the right thing right every time. And that means we're going to go into our processes. What we have to do to have error-free performance is to change the processes that we're working with, to get them so they will allow the employee to do error-free work. And we're going to look at that now. 
and we're going to talk about process qualification, how you can ensure that the processes we're using are going to allow the employee to work and do his work right. Whether you're a small one-man company that you are the entire business process, or whether you're a large conglomerate, there's literally thousands of business processes going on all the time. And as you get bigger, you find out that the business processes sort of are strange as far as the organization is concerned. What we've done is we've organized up and down, vertically. We have this straight structure leading up to the top, down through the functional organizations. But all of our business processes go across functions. They go horizontally. So as a result, these very critical business processes are all pretty much independent. They don't run along in a nice, smooth manner. What they do is they go over bumps, and they, they go between organizations, and they're lost, and there's, there's gaps, and there's overlaps, and there's bureaucracy built in. And what we really need to do is to work on that business process, that process, and treat it as a complete entity. We've got to really develop that partnership, that team between us. We've got to involve them early into the, the cycle so that they get involved in how they're applying their products. You have to provide them good feedback, not just feedback from receiving inspection, but how their product is performing in the field, in your actual operations, in, with your customer. You've got to talk about things like long-term contracts so that they can actually build up their production facilities, bring in new equipment to meet your needs. And you've got to do something to involve them in the whole profit motive. Incentive programs are becoming very, very popular where we provide some sharing of the rewards that we receive financially back to the suppliers that do good work for us. We've got to start by doing that, by upgrading it and putting quality on a stature as, that's at an equal par with cost and schedule. And that action certainly sends a message out to the rest of the organization. But once you do that, you also change the role of quality assurance. You need to take them out of the firefighting role and really expand their effort, not just to the product like we've thought of quality assurance in the past, mm -hmm. but the quality of the total operations. 